All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video here at Maddie Fish 33. Thank you for those of you that have been following along. Couldn't do this without you guys. And for those of you that are new to the channel, thank you for joining us. Please remember to like, subscribe, click, share. I messed that all up, but like, subscribe, click, share. See, I can't even do it. I'm going to leave this in just for you guys. But <laughs> I think you guys get the point. Like, subscribe, click that bell, get those notifications, and share it with your friends. Follow us on this fishy journey. So, earlier today, if you've been watching, you saw that we posted our video of getting our big bumblebee and our big Maylandia out of this system. So, when I did that, I took them to my buddies down at London Town Tropicals, which more about them um, here a little bit later in this video. All I can say is like excellent fish shop guys. I always pick something up. Can't help myself whenever I go there. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about them later in this video. Let's get to, because I know um, some of you guys have been asking for some acclimation videos. So we have a good opportunity to do that because we're going to acclimate two fish for Mbuna Mountain over here. And we're also going to acclimate two fish for the jungle right here. So lots going on. And then also um, we did get um, some nuisance snails from our friends down at London Town Tropicals. Um, and um, they are going to be food for our Fajaca. So guys, let's go ahead and um, get some water out of these systems and start activating some fish. I'm not going to do a drip, guys. I mean, these fish just had like an hour journey. They're pretty nice and warm. Um, so, um, you know, we're just going to do this um, with a little acclimation, tank water, buckets, give them some time, just let them adjust with some 50-50 water this way. And then we're going to go ahead and do the old plop and drop this time. Now, you know, some people may say, okay, yeah, yeah, this is how I do it. There's also plenty of other ways to do it. We could do drip acclimation. I don't think that's going to be necessary um, because these aren't massive fish. I think um, that, is, that is actually, you know, more important to do when you have a larger fish or a more sensitive fish. Um, none of these fish are like crazy sensitive by any means but um so we're gonna get to that here in a second let's go ahead and get some water out and into these um buckets so that you can um, acclimate these fish and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take my bubblers and stick them on here for now as well um just so we can oxygenate these fish um, and we'll probably give them a, a tiny little salt bath while we're at this as well. Let me grab some salt real quick, guys. Just gonna grab some plain old sea salt or kosher salt, just like I talk about when you do your water changes. This stuff has the same effects as aquarium salt, and it doesn't cost you near the amount of money, but make sure that you are using non-iodized salt and it's all natural salt. Otherwise, uh, not gonna be good. So, so I said, regular old natural sea salt, but anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get into this. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get about a gallon of water out of the jungle. Put it in this bucket. We don't need a whole heck of a lot of water. I really just kind of want it, like I said, to be about 50-50 um, compared to what we were getting out of our other system. In fact, actually, you guys, I just felt that bag when I was taking it out. And they're not cold by any means, but I think the water is a little bit cooler than my systems. So we're going to go ahead and take some system water out, set that up. We'll float these guys for just a few minutes, um, and then we'll take care of it. So. Let's go ahead and get the two guys that are going in here. Yep, all right. So we're going to reveal these fish a little bit later in the video, and then we'll talk about it. And then 
So we have our two South Central American cichlids that are here for the jungle. We have um, two new Mbuna types for the um, Mbuna mountain tank. And then, like I said, we also have some snails for our pucker fish. One of these guys is a little small for this tank, but I decided to get him anyways. I think it'll be all right. There's plenty of places for him to hide. Hopefully, we don't encounter any issue with that fish. Um, it's a fish that I've wanted to put in this tank for a while. It's just he didn't happen to have any larger ones currently. So we went with it. All right. And we have a plant here for our puffer fish tank, and we have our snails for our puffer fish tank as well. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put some water in this bucket as well. So when we break these two fish out, these two different groups out, we have two different places to put them. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and pause you guys and I'll bring you back here after all this, um, you know settling occurs when these fish get to sit here and the temperature comes up in the bags just a little bit um, before we go ahead and break them out. They all seem to be doing quite well though um, from their trip um, considering because traffic was not great it was raining and uh, it took me about know, an hour and 15 minutes to get back um, from London Town Tropicals today. Uh, normally that's about a 35-40 minute drive for me um, but like I said guys, we're going to let them acclimate a little bit and then we're going to take them out of the bags and then acclimate them again as well and give them a little salt bath. So I'll see you guys back here in one second. And we're back. Alright guys, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. We have our bubblers going with some of our tank water already. We're going to do a little bit of salt give these guys a tiny little salt bath. Um, one of the reasons I'm doing this um, helps relax your fish. Um, it's also good for their slime coat, things like that as well. Um, and shame on me, I actually um, I don't have any stress coat right now. Um, it's not something I use very often. I do use, like to use it when I'm acclimating fish, uh, but I totally blanked on the fact that I didn't have any more at home while I was at the fish store and failed to take the opportunity to pick some more up. So we're going to do it a little more old fashioned and we're going to do a little salt bath for these guys. So let's go ahead and move our South Centrals first, get them acclimating. So you can't see it too particularly well. Let me see if I can bring them over. I don't know how well you guys are really going to be able to see these guys in the bag. Well, maybe not too bad. A um, little crease there makes it hard. But what we have in this bag, this is a wild, uh, true threadfin acara. Um, it was between this fish or an albino. I may actually go back and get an albino another day, but um, very happy with this. I think it's going to be a very nice addition um, to our jungle system. And then the other fish for our jungle system. Honestly guys, I'm going to apologize in advance. I might end up butchering this name. Um, I, I don't know the common name for this fish. I actually had my uh, my guy Adam got from London Town Tropicals um, write the name of this fish on the bag for me because I, I, there's no way I'm going to remember that by the time I get home. But this is a Crovia Zingesis. Um, I think I probably butchered that, but <laughs> let's, um, here, so you guys can actually read what the name is. So if you want to look this fish up on your own, you can see, and he's not much right now, but one day he's going to be a very, very pretty fish, like a pearly whitish blue with some reds and other things like that. So a nice, unique addition to our jungle tank with this guy as well. So let's go ahead and pop him in here with his buddy, and then we'll get them in with all of their new friends. 
Alright. And now for the Africans. So, the first fish, this one's easy for me to remember. I've had this fish in the past. It's a beautiful fish. Um, I don't think, I don't recall having this fish when we were on the channel. Um, however, so I got a JLo Reef um, Umbuno. And he's kind of small, like I said. We'll see how he does. There he goes. We'll see how he does in this system. He should be just fine. Um, but if push comes to shove, I have somewhere that I can put him. Um, if necessary. So, you know, don't just do things like this. Always have a plan. Always be prepared uh, in that sense, guys. So let's go ahead and get this guy up out of here. And into the acclimation. All right. All right, he's in there. I don't know why for a second I thought that I had him stuck in the back. Now, our other African, um, going to be a pretty fish one day as well. Um, this is a golden celosi. Yes. Um, don't ask me to spell that, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but I, I will try and look that up and get that in the comments below for you. Um, not looking very golden right now. When we were in the store, though, this fish looked brilliant. Um, so hopefully it doesn't take him very long to color back up once he's readjusted. And I think this is a great time to introduce these fish to Mbuna Mountain because, like I said, we just moved our two bosses out of the tank, and there's got to be a new boss in this tank. Um, if you've been following along long enough to know the fish in Mbuna Mountain, tell me who you think is going to be the boss. I know who I think is going to end up being the new boss in the tank, um, but... I'm not going to tell you guys right now, I want to see what you guys think before I go ahead and say that because I have a very good suspicion that I'm probably going to be correct about this. Um, we're just going to have to see how this all goes down. So, we're going to let these guys acclimate in those buckets for about 15 more minutes and then we are going to get them into their new forever homes. And I will see you guys in a minute when we do that, and it'll be just like this. All right, and we are back again, guys. It has been about 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and get these guys in with their newfound buddies. Got to move you guys here real quick. Sorry for that. All right. We'll start with our Africans. Get them in there first. Let me grab a little net. Yeah, we'll do a net for these guys. Still have these nets drying out from uh, when we caught our bumblebee in our Maylandia earlier. So let's go ahead and take care of these guys. Probably be able to get them at the same time if we do this right. Come on, buddy. Oh, Alright, right, so the silo side wants to go first. Our J Lo Reef didn't quite want to get in there. So, very faded, but he had a, a long journey just now. Um, so, we'll see how he develops over the next couple days. I'm sure he's going to do just fine. And he's going to look fantastic soon, if not earlier than later. Let's get our J Lo Reef. He's just. I mean, he was beautiful in the story. He's still got a decent color. He's also a little stressed out. See, he's kind of faded out. But he was nice and powder blue with his big black bars and bright yellow uh, fins before. Um, but he'll be okay, more than likely. I see the Hongi's already taking an interest in him. Hopefully that is not a bad sign. I don't think it will be, though, because... That fish is small enough right now that it can get into places that other fish in this system currently cannot. 
Um, and I think that he should grow fast enough that it should not be an issue. All right, let's go ahead and get our South Central American cichlids and we will put them into their forever home as well. Gotta forgive the glare on this, guys. It's making this water look not how it is, but I'll show you what I mean in a minute. I promise you it's, it's not that. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and get these guys out of here. See who we get first. Looks like it's gonna be our wild thread finicaro. Yep. All right, so this guy was, had a little color in the store. Got a ways to go to reach his full potential, but there he goes. Our wild thread finicaro. Don't mind me wiping my glass, guys. And now, um, we're going to get our Crobia Zinquensis in there as well. And like I said, this guy doesn't really hardly have any color. He's got some barring right now. Um, Color-wise, it's going to take him a little bit. But all in all, like I said, it's going to be like pearly bluish white with some reds and blacks. It's going to be a very pretty fish one day. And this is a chonky little guy too. So we'll go ahead and pop him in there. There he goes. Love the shape on this guy, very unique. And um, let's see if we can get a little footage of you uh, for you guys, uh, everybody in their new homes. So, sorry, I just wanted to grab a paper towel and take care of this water real quick, guys. I can't stress to you enough, you know, if you want your stands to stay nice, you want your glass on your aquariums to stay nice, any water that gets on either of them, take care of it as soon as possible. Like, seriously, guys. Like, especially um, on your stand, you don't want it getting down there and causing any issues or causing your stand to weaken. But also on your glass, um, you don't want it to dry there and make a hard water stain. And then you might have to take some diluted vinegar or a razor blade or something of that nature. And you just, just trust me, just take care of it right away and it's less work. Uh, for you in the long run. Let's go ahead and get you guys off the stand. Let's see if we can get a good view. So, there we go. See, this light's just a little bright right now, so it's causing that, like I said, because look, clear as day. And then you see we go here. It's just the refraction from the light, guys. Um, so, see, where are our new guys at? Went straight somewhere to hide, it looks like. Hmm. Might have to wait a little bit to get a good shot of these guys from you, for you. Let's see if we can find them. Also, I gotta take care of that. Nothing harmful, but... We did have a little, um, I, my brain is not working, I'm sorry guys. We did just have a little diatom bloom in here, as you can see. So we need to clean that up off the glass when we do our next water change. Um, yeah, wow, these guys really just went and hid. Oh. So there's our Crobia back there in the corner. Probably not going to get a great shot of him right now for you guys. He's kind of chilling out, figuring things out. And I have no idea where the thread Finicaro went. That's wild because, I mean, compared to some of the other fish, I, there he is. There's our thread finicara under here. Oh, and our electric blue acaro wants the spotlight. Um, also, our fire eel was under here a second ago, but as soon as our blue acara came in, he quickly exited. I don't even think I caught him on camera. But there's our thread finicara, and our crobia is somewhere back there in that corner. And look, guys, there you go. There's our fire eel. He's doing just fine. 
All right, let's see if we can get our Africans that are new on film for you guys real quick. I think I got some, some crud on my camera lens, to be honest with you. Hold on. All right, there we go. So let's see if we can find our new guys. All right, there's our Salosai, our golden Salosai. So he's doing fine, and I'm sure because of the size of him that... Oh, no, he's right there. There's our J-Lo Reef. Um, this is my biggest concern. This guy better stay in the rocks for a little bit because I don't want this guy trying to get any ideas. I don't think he's big enough to swallow him or put him in his mouth per se, but, um, that's our three spot that's going to be moving over with, um, our haps and peacocks sooner than later, more than likely. I just want him to grow like maybe another inch. Uh oh. Yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, hopefully this little J-Lo Reef smartens up, goes down into the rocks and says, Haha, you can't get me. I don't think anybody's going to bother him, though. I think we'll be alright and we're going to get to watch this guy grow. So, the other about, let's go over here where the big boys are real quick so you guys can have a nice little backdrop. Alright, so our lights are pretty darn bright right now. Let's turn this around. That's a little better. Okay, so the big thing about London Town Tropicals that I wanted to tell you guys. First of all, like I said, excellent fish store. I don't mind making the travel to go down there because I always find something I love. They always have tons of unique fish um, and they do a great job of not only importing these fish and bringing them in, but also taking care of their fish in store. So while I was there, I was talking to Adam who runs the store and you know um I've, I've i've been there probably at least a half dozen times at this point um gotten numerous different fish from them which they're all doing fine and they're all fantastic like for example in this tank uh v our super vc10 he came from london town tropicals star lord our beautiful star sapphire he's from london town tropicals i mean and then most of the fish in the jungle aquarium have come from London Town Tropicals and then there's a handful of fish that came to Mbuna Mountain from there as well and London Town Tropicals is where we got our wild Fajaca puffer as well guys so again like you can see it in my fish gallery what these guys do but the exciting thing about this that I wanted to tell you is I spoke to Adam and Adam said he would be willing um, if we scheduled a time for us to do a full store tour of London Town Tropicals for you guys here on the channel. So hopefully we'll be able to get that done sooner than later. It's gonna be hard for me to schedule this. I'm we're getting ready to open a restaurant in like a week. But um, as soon as I'm able to make that happen, guys, be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, stay looking forward to that, guys. So that being said, I also did say earlier in our video from earlier today that our Rostratus had a prolapse going on. We pretty much alleviated that though. We gave our Rostratus a Epsom salt bath with a little bit of um, Conoplex. And you can see there's still a lot of irritation and agitation, but no longer a prolapse. Um, it looks significantly better than it did. So hopefully this fish is on the mend and everything's going to be just fine there. Um, we'll just have to monitor it. We might have to do another bath. We'll see what happens in the next day or two, perhaps. Um, but optimistic there. So, that being said, guys, be on the lookout for a future store tour of London Town Tropicals in Edgewater, Maryland. If you live near in the area, and if you haven't already, I can't recommend them enough. Go check them out. Go see Adam. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in a video with Adam soon doing that store tour. And if not, before the next video, I will see you guys in the next video. Matty Fish, out.